Hello and welcome to another episode of EK's Basics of Liquid Cooling. It's Matiz from the EK headquarters once again, and this time around we're gonna shed some light on liquid cooling radiators and how to choose one or more that are ideal for your system. Now what exactly is a water cooling radiator? As you already know, your PC components such as the CPU, GPU, VRM and so on are being cooled by the attached water blocks when the coolant passes through the block and picks up the heat. That coolant also needs to be cooled somehow and that is where the radiator steps in. The radiator transfers heat from the liquid to the outside air, effectively lowering the liquid's temperature. The bigger the radiator surface, the better the heat transfer. And you know what they say, bigger is always better, at least when it comes to heat transfer. A radiator is comprised of end tanks or chambers and narrow flow channels connecting those tanks. The chambers also have inlet and outlet ports to get the coolant in and out of the radiator, while flow channels connect to fins to spread the heat to an even larger surface. And once the air coming from the radiator fans goes through these fins, the liquid gets sufficiently cooled. The side plates are also a part of the radiator, added to provide structural rigidity and mounting points for the fans. So to summarize, the heat is carried by the coolant from the water blocks to the radiator. When the liquid reaches the radiator, its heat is transferred to the narrow flow channels and fins and subsequently to the air passing through the radiator, ultimately lowering the temperature of the coolant and your PC components. Now that you know what a radiator is and its role in a liquid cooling loop, we can talk about the sizes that they come in. Since cooling fans are necessary to push the air through the radiator and must be attached to the radiator frame, the radiator size is naturally dictated by the standard fan sizes. Those are the 120mm and the 140mm. This means a radiator can come in increments of two sizes, 120, 240, 360 and even 480mm, when it accommodates 420mm fans. Or in the case of 140mm fans, when you can have radiators in 140, 280, 420 and a massive 560 mm. Those numbers do not represent the actual radiator length, since the radiator itself is a bit larger than its size says, if you account for the whole frame and chamber with ports. The radiator size simply tells you the size and number of fans it can accommodate for obvious practical reasons. The width of the radiator is pretty standard, around 120 to 130 mm, or 140 to 145 mm. For example, EK's latest surface radiators are 130 mm wide for 120 mm fans and the 145 mm wide for 140 mm fans. Another radiator dimension to consider is its thickness or height, equally important as the radiator length. EK offers radiators in three thicknesses labeled S, P and X. The S stands for slim and is 30 mm thick. The P stands for performance and is 44 mm thick, while the X represents the extreme version, which is 58 mm thick. We should also mention that two primary materials are used in radiator construction, copper and aluminum. Nowadays, most custom loops are based on copper, but if your loop is based on aluminum, an aluminum radiator is a must since mixing these metals causes galvanic corrosion. And that's a big no-no. And yes, copper is often nickel-plated for protection and aesthetics. And tanks, fittings, however, are usually made of brass, since it doesn't react in combination with the copper. Now, which radiator size should you go for? You need to be aware of two major factors to answer this question. The first factor is the hardware you're going to cool, and the second one is the PC case you plan to use. If you're going for high-end components that need watts upon watts to operate and therefore generate much heat, then you need the biggest possible radiator surface to remove all that heat from the coolant. And let's not forget that the overclocking can sometimes even double the declared wattage and the heat it generates. You can check the power your components draw in the specifications. For example, a Google search for your CPU version and its TDP will tell you the declared power consumption for that CPU. And there is another way to check the amount of heat your components will generate and the estimated cooling power of your radiator. All you have to do is follow these simple steps. First, you need to open our custom loop configurator. In the chassis tab, choose your PC case. We will go with a custom case just to see the numbers that can help us plan the build. After that, you choose your motherboard and CPU. 
we'll go for the MSI MPG X670E Carbon Wi-Fi and one of the best CPUs from AMD at this moment, the Ryzen 9 7950X. Now do the same for your GPU. Again, we'll choose the latest one, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090. We'll skip the RAM choice for this demonstration. The next step is to choose the cooling for your CPU and GPU. Click on both in this case. And now, the fun part. But before we explain the numbers, we must warn you that the numbers are not exact and only represent the best guess, since there are too many variables to consider. Also remember that those numbers can change over time as we update the configurator with our new data. But let's scroll down to the information that we need. Here we can see an estimated heat load that the CPU and GPU will produce without overclocking at full load. Gaming will usually produce lower numbers since the system usually does not run at its maximum while gaming. And here we can see the recommended radiator size that the configurator has picked for us. But since we chose a custom case at the beginning, we get this. However, if you pick an exact case for your build, it will offer the radiator sizes that can fit in that particular case. We recommend always checking that option to see what your case can offer in a radiator compatibility. Now let's see what happens when you expand the bottom tab and go with the expert mode. Next to the cooling numbers, we can see numbers representing watts. Those numbers are an estimate of the maximum the radiator can achieve in an open bench with fans at full speed. We should always try to have the combined cooling power of installed radiators at the same or higher level than the estimated heat load of the system. That means we can keep fans at lower speeds for quiet operation. The higher the difference, the more capable the loop will be of handling the heat, allowing for overclocking and getting more performance out of your system. It is best to use those numbers to see how the length and thickness of the radiator can affect the cooling performance. Now let's tackle the second significant factor for your radiator choice. The PC case you plan to use. As you know by now, the estimated heat load of the components can tell us which radiator size will have suitable cooling power. Or if aesthetics guides you, you can start with the case you like and consult with the EK configurator to see what radiator size it can house. Also, if you already have the PC case and only need to see which radiators can fit inside and their estimated cooling performance, the configurator will tell you just that. The manufacturer's product page should also include the radiator specification for your chassis, so make sure you also check that out. Extra radiator features. Now that you know what radiator size can fit in your case and which radiator you will use, let's talk about some extra features of the radiator. Our very own EK Quantum Surface radiators offer some neat characteristics. The P and the X radiators are multi-port versions. This means they have two additional G1 quarter threaded connection ports on the side and one extra port on the opposing end for air bleeding. This is extremely handy as it gives you different options for tube routing inside the case. If the regular port connection is unsuitable for your build, you need an alternative solution. That's where our crossflow radiators come in. You can find them in two and three fan sizes for our P-series radiators. These X-Flow multiport radiators have four G1 quarter threaded connection ports on both ends, allowing for 16 ways to connect inlet and outlet ports. Now that's a lot. Just keep in mind that the X-Flow version cannot be used in the standard port configuration, since the coolant would just be circling through the end tanks. Make sure to understand how X-Flow versions operate before installation. All EK Quantum Surface radiators are also EK Matrix 7 compatible. To remind you, Matrix 7 standardizes the dimensions of water cooling products, including the port position and spacing, making liquid cooling loop assembly more straightforward and intuitive. This means you can spend less time planning the loop and bending the tubes, and end up having parallel tube runs easier than ever. With the EK Matrix 7 standard, our surface radiators effortlessly integrate with Reflection 2, the second generation of quantum distro plates. This will enable you to easily swap and upgrade between S, P and X series surface radiators, as much as your PC case allows. Now to sum it all up, the most important questions that must be answered when choosing a radiator for your build are What will be the heat load or what wattage can we expect from the components that will be liquid-cooled? Which PC case will we use and what radiator sizes can it accommodate? Once we have those questions answered, we can narrow it down to the radiator we need. But remember that it's always best to go for the biggest possible radiator your chassis supports. Benefits will always exceed the price difference. Now for the final stretch, let's answer some frequently asked questions. 
longer or thicker radiator? Which is better? Now, the short answer is that the longer radiator is a better option than the thicker one that is shorter in length. But we have one whole blog that explains this in detail and you can find the link in the description below. Should I choose push, pull or push-pull setup? In short, the push-pull fan setup is better, but this means you need some extra space for the second row of fans. You can read more on this subject in another blog post linked below. Does the old measure of 120 mm per component still work? No, not exactly. The new generations of high-end components produce more heat, so check your component's heat load before deciding on the radiator size. Is it ok to use fewer fans on a radiator than specified? No, this is absolutely not ok. For example, if you have a 360mm radiator that needs 320mm fans, then all three fans have to be correctly mounted so the air can only go through the radiator without escaping to the sides or through the space where a fan was supposed to be. Should radiators only be mounted on top of the case due to hot air rising? No. As soon as you put the fan on the radiator, its effect will be stronger than natural convection, making that heat exchange insignificant. This means you can have a radiator wherever your setup allows, including the bottom of your PC case. Should I only use fans like Vardar and EK Loop FPT on my radiators? Yes, you should, because they have full frame contact and special blades that create high static pressure that pushes the air through the radiator fins. Can I disassemble the radiator to paint it? Yes, at least in the case of EK Quantum surface radiators, since they are modular and their frame can easily be taken off and custom painted. Will more radiators in one loop restrict the pump flow? No, they will not. EK radiators are designed with low flow restriction in mind. This means you can add multiple radiators to your cooling loop using only a single D5 or DDC pump. The radiators are also airflow friendly and low restriction, allowing lower fan speed operation to achieve the same performance. Low airflow restriction keeps the case well ventilated and allows other radiators in the case to work properly. Thank you for sticking around! You know what to do now! Like, share, comment and subscribe if this kind of content is your cup of… some cool beverage. Until next time, stay cool.